Okay, so I'm slowly starting to catch up with everything. My leech earth map is finally down to like six things I have to do or seven, but I'm finally back to playing FGO consistently. Now let's time to like fully start clearing out these servants that I missed. Edmund Dantes is one of the easiest quick servants I've used for harder content. Now granted, if you see me using him on stream, I don't make him look that good. But that's also because I'm, you're not supposed to be doing the leech earth where you have uh, two, two, one with it being Helena. You're technically not supposed to be doing it the way I do it. You are definitely supposed to be you know, clearing those first two waves in a somewhat timely manner. I'm trying to face guard that shit and link it to Helena just so I don't have to run black rail, run bug suit and everything. I don't make this character look good. But if you are fighting a boss, this is probably one of the best units to bring because he's a quick unit and he's going to get a lot of refund off making stars after his MP when he's uh, fighting post break. He is not going to have problems getting to break bar. And if you are worried about taking damage since he's an Avenger and he's got this super low HP, don't worry about it. You're not going to take damage as long as you keep him buffed up. So let us get started. First off, base attack is nice and high for normal servants. But for an Avenger, this is actually pretty low. Uh, in general, Avengers, most of them, for the five stars at least, have above 12.6k attack. He's sitting at 12.7. It's not the highest, but... The ban for Avengers is like, this is 2,700 and Jolter's at 13.2 or something around there. It's like, it's a 500 point difference. It's not like it's Jarcher compared, compared to Edmund Dante's. That's like a 2,000, <clears throat> sorry. That's like a 2,000 attack difference. You're not gonna see too much in terms of performance. Yes, attack buffs scale better on Jolter than they do uh, Emin Dante's or Count of Monte Cristo for this form. But it's like, we're talking like fractions of a percent more from an attack. So yes, attack has a lot to do with stuff and help. It's part of pretty much every damage form. But when the when it's not a significant difference, you don't have to break. 500 it's a lot but it's not that much of a significant difference when we compare like high attack five stars to like mid attack five stars. there's like at least a thousand different and then mid to low not good at that it's like he's in the good he's in the top five ten percent at least And then HP is like four star numbers. I I I want to even say low five star four star numbers HP. You need to protect this guy. He's an Avenger. They die pretty easily, and he wants to be hit too. He wants to get some hit because when he get hit, when he gets hit, he gets more MP gain than pretty much any other class. Star weight, star gen. These are normal Avenger numbers. Uh, like him being an avenger is the only issue with him being quick just because his star gen is low but he kind of it, it, if you're using ruler scotty like it kind of doesn't matter at that point because you just make so many stars to begin with. mp charge is healthy at 0.72 well if this was a five hit like he actually would have been yeah, I, he would have had like coin sky as art card while also having like stupid damage so would have been nice if they made this four, but they weren't going. They just weren't. Like if you've ever used Koi and Skaya, like it just had her face card and had a crit on the art card, that thing like charges up most of her MP. Like a, an MP spammer like Dante's, it's honestly a miracle they even gave him a three hit card. That like that's how lethal this could be in terms of him constantly looping his MP back. <laughs> okay, so first skill 
and thank God he came out now. Can you imagine if he came out three, four years ago? This, these might have been one turn buffs. How far FTO has come. So he has two three turn buffs of Quick and Buster. Again, why you'd want to bring Ruler Scotty. And then he actually has Invo for himself. Two attacks, three turns. Usually, usually you don't want survivability tied to your card buff, but because all three of these effects are three turns, and this is two attacks, not like it can't be used up unless you want. This is going to protect him for two attacks. And for someone that has very low HP, it doesn't matter whether they're MPs or like face or crits. You want to not take damage so he doesn't die. He takes damage, he's dead. He will die very, very quickly. And if you are bringing bitch in here to like reduce his cooldown and just give him more buster crit, he's gonna go down even faster because like a bitch will like drain his HP by a thousand. That is like for him, that is like almost 10% of his HP. For other units, it's like I'll, it's like seven, like seven, eight percent. But for him, it's like legit almost ten percent of his HP. All right. Uh, yeah. No, it always it always depends on what level. But this I think is like eight percent. And like for other units that are like John Archer, for for example, or like a ratio that has like really high base HP. It's like 5%, thousands like 5%. I don't know, I need, uh, I'd need to bring out the ca actual calculator for that. But yeah, him having invul himself since Scotty isn't really known for giving it, him invul and like it again, he does have the two buster cards. We don't care about hit counts, but there are two buster cards on a high base stack unit. You might honestly bring bitch and you just have to be aware of that that you're definitely on a timer second skill 30 percent attack and then an on attack debuff where he inflicts burn so this is basically you don't have to run burn command codes at the same time you want to run burn command codes you don't not want to run it it's not like jocks how she just needs before her buff she needed to run curse command codes just so she could apply the debuff before she MP'd. Now she's able to do that without having command codes, but she doesn't, we're getting into his, uh, Dante's MP, but Jock uh, de Malay does not scale off how many curses are on the enemy. She scales off doing dot damage. Dante's does not scale off doing dot damage. He scales off how many burns you have. <laughs> so just like Young Buffet, how you would uh eh, no nah, Young Buffet is kind of like a Jacques example. She doesn't get more damage per burn. But you want to be running as many burn command codes on Dante's as possible. It helps his MP dramatically. You're gonna want to be doing face cards to begin with. So this is running having this on as high a cooldown as possible. I mean, as low a cooldown as possible, sorry. I meant as high a skill. You're gonna dramatically increase Dante's ramp up speed. Third skill, 50% battery, 50% crit damage, and 1000% star weight on a three turn cooldown. Dante's just kinda has almost everything a quick servant wants battery hard buff missing the mp gain but the mp gain honestly isn't as big as deal if you're not like a looper if you're not farming like that's when mp gain like genuinely matters if you like if you're a quick unit and you don't have mp gain a car buff or a battery you are going to be struggling there is some issue in the farming that stops you from like functioning properly Dante's doesn't have that issue because he doesn't need to worry about it. He has face cards he's supposed to be relying on. Farmers are not supposed to be face guarding. If you're face guarding with a farmer, then you're planning to not kill something. And if you have two enemies with the same HP, that gets a little dicey. All right, passive skills. 
nine percent attack mp gen when he's attacked so i believe this bumps it up to basically six percent mp gain if i'm not mistaken for how exactly this passive works works it turns it from a five percent to a six percent gain so dante's when he gets hit literally gets double the mp gain <clears throat> that a saber servant would get so when a saber servant takes like five hits from something and only gets 15 dante has basically got a battery from most other most other quick units at 30 percent and then he also charges three percent per, per turn and he gets an extra little bit of crit damage as a passive so a uh, pen skills if you plan on using dante's in more situations than just boss killing you want to use him in farming as a single target nuke it's okay for aoe avengers to be worried about type neutral the issue with bringing dante specifically for a one turn nuke is that it's possible you have a rider that could do the job and possibly better just because you'll have full class advantage if if you want to use dante's like that i wouldn't advise mp1 just because now you're putting carding into what's normally just mp spam for farming however we don't have many single target uh avengers that actually have like chunky batteries so if there is a ruler that shows up in a lotto like yeah you're gonna want to use edmund dante's because what are your options like yes you could use a reese but a reese kind of does need a little setup to work if you're just pressing buttons uh a reese isn't going to be as helpful as you think and especially if you are not fighting a servant that is where a reese is definitely going to start falling off personally i think dante's works better with the extra attack but that's just my bias i think any boss killer if especially dante's where he's supposed to be like uh beating up people after they can't fight back like he gets basically more free refund if this is like higher <clears throat> and more stars which is just nice mp 10 hit single target ignores invo and then stuns them for a turn guaranteed this is 500 percent chance to stun if the enemy does not have stun immunity, they are stunned. No amount of magic resist is going to stop this from landing, which is awesome. They made his MP very spammable. They made him able to actually refund after the MP. And then you have supports that can get him up higher. It all just depends. Battery, hard buffs, anything that can make Dante's more lethal that is what you kind of want to add in super effective damage that scales with everything else so if you do choose to bring oberon this will multiply with uh black rail being doubled it's not super effective however because this is burn synergy you could also use honey lake and then now your face cards are getting power mods and then your mp gets a power mod times a super effective niche that is literally double dipping on itself it scales up to 200 uh sorry yep 200 percent super effective because 10 times 10 is 100 and 100 plus 100 is 200 sorry if you guys sorry if i sound redundant i teach elementary school kids i go over this unfortunately sometimes i have to remind my fifth graders about basic multiplication and the last part of it, uh, the normal effect is he burns himself, but it's 500, so don't worry about it. And just like OG Dante, he puts defense down, uh, ramp up. This isn't, is, yeah, this isn't as massive, but the fact that he has a lot of multiplicative uh, buffs, very, very nice.
Mads to ascend. Uh, what can I say? They're annoying. I I'm stuck. I'm stuck here for one of my skills. And then I got stuck here. And if you do not clear ordeal call, you're stuck here. Because I don't think you want to use, what is that? 135 of your pure prisms. Literally just... Wait, sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'm right. 135 of your pure prisms just because you don't want to go through the story and beat ordeal call too. Clear through the story so you can farm this. Do not use your uh, prisms on this. You get at least 10 through going through the story. You get at least one skill. I... <laughs> don't don't burn out all your pre prisms because we're probably not getting another story chapter for at least five months if you run out now you're gonna have to keep summoning new servants if you want any modicum of pure prisms on your account i personally like his depends more than i like his normal skills uh helps with the fact his appends only need three gold mats his active needs one, two, three, four, five, five, and a lot of them too. And then his ascension, he also needs four. Dante's is not someone that's going to be easy to level up if you have a lot of different characters that all need different mats. He is going to eat into all of them at once. So if you have plans that you need to level a specific servant, say Melusin, most servants in the game a lot of servants in the game every single append in the game hey this is the easiest one no <laughs> not many people use this mat but yeah he is an expensive boy to level bon ce power mod to burn for everyone while he's on the field I think Edmund Dantes is Saber Medusa, just as little effort put into survivability as possible. Saber Medusa, really, really good. She's stunt, but she's more for AoE fights. Dantes is 1v1. He is going to demolish pretty much anyone you bring him against. Is he, the, is he a must summon? Is this a priority you need to pick up uh, when he goes on raid up? I would say he's significantly stronger than his competition. Which is other single targets, even in their own class. Because, simply for the fact he can just stun lock. For any situation where it is not a clean 3-3-3. Or, not, sorry, not 3-3-3. A clean you break bar you break bar you break bar like if there are any kind of quests that stagger like force you to stop you cannot do damage this turn and it stops you from breaking bar other dps's are gonna start falling off dante's with it, the fact that his stun is guaranteed and he does not need us like one of his skill buffs to be active to be able to proc it it has value he is not the strongest hitting single target Avenger. That is always going to belong to Tyra when she's fighting Genji. No servant in the game is ever going to be able to touch Tyra when she's fighting Genji. Especially because a lot of the Genji are berserkers, so she's getting class effectiveness as much as anyone else would. So other people would actively have to be comparing to uh, Tyra's damage when she's fighting Raiko or uh, Kintoki. Now against other Genjis that are not Berserkers, yes, you might want to bring a full class advantage character. Uh, yeah. yeah, like Genji, 162,000. 67,000 with the two burns. Yeah, like, but Genji is so niche. And this is Genji without even a grudge, like literally almost double damage. But no grudge, Tyra is not. Yeah, that that really is it. If you are not fighting solo, then don't bring Tyra. I'm glad that Tyra is being. There is another servant. 
that can do what people were having Tyra do. And now Tyra can just be fully focused on being the ultimate cockroach. That if the more you try and kill her, the stronger she gets. Dante's is going to be your boss killer. He is going to be the general use one. And I'm fine with that. I think it works a whole lot better. It's a whole lot more healthy. These two units, they can be swapped around, but they have their niche and they shine so much more far apart from each other because of what they are supposed to be doing. All right. This is me trying to get back into the mood. Uh, I'm going to try and squeeze a stream right after this, uh, just so I have some funny and stuff to do. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.